Hey guys, Erica here, and welcome back to Geek Lit Read Stuff. And today I thought it would be a lot of fun to bring you guys the fave festive family book tag. Uh, hey, editing Erica here. I made a mistake. Uh, this tag was created by Kayla over at Crack Into a Good Book. And I was tagged last week by Andrew over at Get Right On It. Uh, Andrew is one of my teammates for the Shelf Space Reindeer Games Readathon. He's a great guy. He makes fantastic content. He's very energetic. He's really fun to watch. So if you haven't checked out his videos before, I'll have him and Kayla linked below. Please check them out. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. So the first question, uh, a Muppet Christmas Carol. What's your favorite adaptation or retelling? I'm not super familiar with like fairy tale retellings and things like that. So I'm going to go with my favorite book to movie adaptation, and that would be The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey. Uh, this is a zombie style story, and the book itself is really good. Uh, it follows this young girl named Melanie who, um, she's like in this cell, she has to be brought out for class, the military's everywhere, and she doesn't really understand why. Well, something pops off there at the military base, and it jumps in the story. I don't really want to spoil anything. Um, but there was a really good movie of this book made. Uh, I'm not really sure how long ago, but it has Glenn Close in it. I saw it, I think, on Amazon Prime. But from what I remember, it follows the book pretty well. And all the actors are really good. The girl who plays Melanie was a fantastic young actress. She did a really great job kind of catching that spirit of innocence that Melanie has in the book. I love that movie. Um, there's a sequel to this book called The Boy on the Bridge. I didn't really like it. So in my head, I pretend this is a standalone. Second question, The Grinch. Who is your favorite book villain? Now I had some difficulty kind of deciding what my answer would be for this. I would like to say like the Lannisters, you know, like Cersei and Joffrey. Mm, but I'm I'm worried. I am scared how those books are going to end because I got my heart shattered by the TV show. So I went with a safer pick of a series that's completed. And I know he's not the main bad guy, but Andros Guile in the Lightbringer series. That dude, I hated him. He was awful. He treated Kip terribly. He was the worst grandfather ever. He was a big old jerk. Um, he's not like the the main bad guy in this story, but uh, you definitely don't like him. Third question is Spongebob Christmas Special. What's one of the first books you read in your favorite genres? And this one's kind of hard for me because it seems like as far back as I can remember, I've been reading books of the fantastic. I've been reading fantasy and science fiction for really as long as I can remember. But I know I've mentioned it a few times before, my favorite subgenre is like post-apocalyptic dystopian books. And for that, my first book I remember reading was The Giver by Lois Lowry. Uh, this is the 25th anniversary edition. Now this book came out in 1993, so I would have been about 10 years old. And I don't know how I got my hands on it. I guess maybe it was at the library. It had to have been. Uh, we, I'm not even sure. I don't think we had a bookstore at that time. But that book, I love the way it's written. It's, the themes are, I mean, there's some complicated themes in this, but it's written in such a way that I understood at the age of 10, you know, what the surface story was, as well as kind of the deeper meanings in it. It's just a phenomenal book, and I consider it one of those, I guess, kind of transition books to bring me out of, like, the, the children's literature that I was reading into that a little more older kind of uh, setting. I love this book. I recommend it all the time. Uh, it's fantastic. I haven't read it in a while. There's other books in the series that I don't know anything about. Also, I didn't hate the movie that came out uh, based on this book. It had mm, Jeff Bridges in it. I didn't think it was bad, but... I think everyone else did, so it could just be me. Okay, fourth question. A Christmas story. Name a book that you love that's won an award. I'm going to cheese this one a little bit. Now, when this book came out, 
it wasn't, I don't think it received like the greatest reviews. It was like more of a lukewarm reception. But as the years have gone by, it's been recognized as like one of the greatest modern pieces of American literature. And that would be Cormac McCarthy's Blood Meridian. I believe this book was published in 1985. We can go with it. Pretty sure it was 1985. But this story follows a group of like scalpers on the border there between like Mexico and Texas in the 1950s. Now, if you've never read Cormac McCarthy, he can be a little difficult to read. Uh, there's very sparse use of punctuation, no quotation marks. It's almost just like a flow. And I found by reading him, because I've read several of his books now, if you stop to think about what's happening too much, you almost like lose your whole train. So you, you have to like back up. Like this book's, it's a little over 300 pages. And it might have taken me like a week to read it the first time I read it. But phenomenal prose. It's just, I'd like to read a little bit of it actually to you. That's why the bookmark's in here. Now come the days of begging, days of theft, days of riding where there rode no soul save he. He's left behind the pied and wounded country and the evening sun declines before him beyond an endless swale and dark falls here like a thunderclap and a cold wind sets the weeds to gnashing. And that's such a beautifully written sentence. Um, also, like, I think it kind of influenced a Florence and the Machine song. It's useless trivia now you have in your head. Now, there is some language and stuff used in this book that, you know, doesn't really fly. Um, I don't know why McCarthy put it in there, but it is in there. So kind of trigger warnings for language. But it's a beautiful book. Beautiful book that really addresses some really dark things. Also, Judge Holden in this book is really probably my favorite villain in a book, just being real, but I didn't want to name this book twice. Also, whoops, I forgot. Uh, while this book wasn't like super critically acclaimed when it came out, um, it was placed on the Time Magazine's 100 Best English Language Novels from 1923 to 2005. I got that from Wikipedia. I tried to find like the actual page, but the link was gone. But trust me, like this one's, it's it's very much recognized as a really good book. I don't think it necessarily won any awards when it came out though. So if I can give another answer to this, let's just go ahead and go with the fifth season. It's behind me. It won a Hugo. The whole series won a Hugo. It's a great series and Kay Jemison's awesome. Uh, fifth question, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. What's a book that you were excited to read that turned out to be a disappointment? Interference, is that what it's called? Give me a second, let me look it up. Um, that would be Interference by Sue Burke. I have it on my Kindle, I don't have a physical copy. Uh, this is the second part of her duology that started with Semiosis. Now, Semiosis was awesome. It was a really great first contact story, um, exploring like contact between like different forms of life, like specifically plant life, and the settlers that arrived on the planet. It was great. And I was so excited to get started on Interference. It, it wasn't so, so great. Mm -mm, no. It's fine, but if I ever go to reread those books, I will most definitely only read Semiosis and just kind of pretend like interference didn't happen. Uh, number six, Bad Santa. Name a character who's optimistic and really wants to help others. And I'm gonna go with a recent read for that, Amaya from The Goblin Emperor. He was so lovable. I love that little guy. Um, there's a scene in particular in that book where he is speaking with um, this lady who's kind of the caretaker of an older woman that helped him when his mom passed away. And he's asking, you know, what can I do to help you all? And she's like, well, we're kind of cold if you could hook us up with some um, stuff to burn here in the house. And 
as he's leaving, he tells, you know, one of his um, servants or something, or he's going to tell his servants to help out the family. And he feels guilty because his way of helping someone, it's not him actually doing something. It's just him telling someone to do something. And I'm just like, I don't think that lady cares. She's cold. If you can help her not be cold, she don't care. But he was such a sweet little character. Ah, oh, he had such a big heart. I loved Maya so much. I'm really starting to get hyped for the sequel for that book. There's a kitty cat outside doing kitty cat things. And I hope my dogs don't notice because they will bark. So number seven, the Santa Claus. What is something from a book that you wish were real? I'm definitely choosing this answer. But um, I'm a big Star Trek fan, love it. I've been watching it since Next Generation. I don't really know what season, but I've definitely been like it, just a big fan for most of my memory. So I'm, I don't know if this counts. I'm gonna make it count. The Federation, right? Like who doesn't want to live in the Federation? It's awesome. They have transporters, they have spaceships, they have everything. And, and people, except for bad morals, they don't count. But other than them, everyone's kind of cool. They're chill. They just want to help people out, do the right thing all the time. Totally the Federation. Also, this is a goofy little book that I love that tells the biography of Captain Catherine Janeway. Uh, recently, another book has come out called The Autobiography of Catherine Janeway. I haven't. One day I'm going to read both of these books back to back because I'm a nerd. That's, that's what we do. It's so goofy. I love this thing. I actually had it in hardback. I lost the hardback. Devastating. And I found this at a used bookstore and I was so pumped. Number eight, The Nightmare Before Christmas. What's one book that's perfect to read in winter? Dude, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. You, you read Lord of the Rings in winter. It's just a book series designed for you to be comfy under a blanket next to a fire. Fantastic Christmas read. I wonder if I think this because the movies came out like around that Christmas season. Because uh, when they came out, I was in college and it was like Every time a midnight showing came out for one of them, you know, three years in a row, I always had a final the next day, but I didn't care. I definitely went to those midnight showings. Uh, number nine, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. What's one of your favorite creatures from a book? Ah, there's so many. I love so many different types of creatures. Um, unfortunately, like I don't feel like enough books nowadays really use those kind of archetypal creatures, you know, like orcs and elves and halflings and all of that. You just don't see a whole lot of it nowadays. I think the best use I've seen recently has been in Kings of the Wild. There's tons of different types of like mythical creatures and stuff in that book and they're all done super well. It's just like a D&D &D monster manual kind of exploded in your face. It's wonderful. Also, The Great Bastards had some centaurs in it. That was pretty cool. I don't remember seeing a lot of centaurs in books before. But if I have to think of like a specific thing, I guess I'll say the Spren in the Stormlight Archive series. They're always kind of goofy if you think about them, but it would be sort of fun to have like little emotions just popping around you all the time. And we have a couple of bonus questions. Uh, the first is what's your favorite holiday movie? My favorite movie about a holiday is is Independence Day, which probably isn't the answer anyone wants to hear, but I love Independence Day. I practically have that movie memorized. But for my favorite Christmas movies, well, I'm on Team Kevin McAllister, so I love Home Alone. Um, my mom and I like watch Bad Santa every year, but I do think my favorite's probably A Christmas Story. I get a kick out of that movie. And the second bonus question is, do you have a favorite book to read around the holidays? Not really. I, I kind of just, 
I can't plan out reading very well. It's just like whatever I'm in the mood for is what I gravitate towards. So there's nothing that I like to enjoy more during uh, winter than summer or whatever. But I do think this is a great place to start. And for this tag, I'm gonna go ahead and tag Lyra over at Lyra Bat. Uh, she makes some fantastic content. I'll have her tag down below. If you haven't checked her out, please go and check out her videos. And with that, I'm all finished up with the fave festive family book tag. Um, guys, please um, leave some comments down below, subscribe, and we'll talk to you guys later.